Good to be here. Good to share with you once again. As we uh, we're looking, we've been doing a little uh, sermon series. If you've been around about people hiding in the Bible, sermons about people you've probably never heard about. We did Lot's wife. There was lots to say about her. Um, yes, that we got about best reaction was last week. Um, <laughs> We did Abishai last week, a servant of David, a, a, a mighty soldier. And this morning we're looking at Korah, people hiding in the Bible. But let me pray. Father God, as we just come now to open your word, may you be instructing, encouraging, and enlightening us as we open your word and hear from you today. Father, take my words. Use them, I pray. Lord, may our ears be open, may our hearts be receptive, as we just take some time to hear from your word. Thank you for different Bible characters, different stories, different things that happen throughout your word, Lord God, that can inspire and encourage and challenge us. So Lord, speak to us today, we pray, from your word, in Jesus' name, Amen. Let us not miss out on what God wants to do. Don't miss what he's given you. Don't overlook what he has done. Because nothing is ever wasted. This morning I want us to have a look at a man named Korah. As he hides there in the pages of scripture. Now he was like many of us. We don't realise what we have until it's gone. We don't realise what we have until it's been taken away. We think that the grass looks greener over there until we get over there and the grass is basically the same as the grass that was over there. It isn't much different and the grass isn't always greener when we get there. We need to let faith become a bridge between where I am today and where I need to get to. Friends, let God do a work in you. Let His Holy Spirit transform you. Let's sh stop shutting God out, shutting God down. Let us unblock our ears. Let's soften our hearts to His Word, His ways, His commands. For He understands. He comforts. He comes alongside. He enables. Don't miss him, for he hears our prayers. Friends, Korah missed out. Who was this guy hiding in the Bible? Who was Korah? Well, he was a Levite who assisted the daily function of the tabernacle. Israel had rebelled against God. They had grumbled. They had complained. Oh, send us back to Egypt. We're all going to die out here. They grumbled, they complained, they pointed the finger at Moses. Oh, what on earth is he up to? They would say, oh, we had food in Egypt. Oh, Egypt was so great. Yes, being beaten by the slave masters. They grumbled, complained, oh, the land is full of giants that God has given us. We won't survive. We're going to die. There's nothing to eat. And so they grumbled and complained and pointed the finger at Moses. And now this guy called Korah gathers 250 men in Numbers chapter 16. And he basically has three complaints. Moses is no better than anyone else. Everyone in Israel has been chosen by the Lord. And the third thing is we don't need to obey him. What Korah had forgotten was that God had appointed Moses and given him a special role before God and a special role before the people. Moses would agree that he's no better than anyone else. If you remember the burning bush, he spent a lot of time telling the people why Sorry, telling God why he thought he wasn't good enough. Coming up with lots of excuses. God, why have you chosen me? Send Aaron. I can't talk. I can't do this. He would also agree that the Israelite people were chosen by God. But Korah 
Korah twisted the truth and made trouble. Korah wanted to be in charge. Moses was called to lead the people. God welcomed him into his presence. They talked face to face. He affirmed, God affirmed Moses' calling and his leadership by signs and wonders. Korah did not appreciate his own position. He was chosen to minister special services in the tabernacle, one of the first people chosen and set apart for this role. In Numbers 16, verse 9, we read, Isn't it enough for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the rest of the Israelite community and brought you near himself to do the work at the Lord's tabernacle and to stand before the community and minister to them. Wasn't that enough for you? No, it wasn't enough for Korah. He couldn't appreciate his position. He couldn't appreciate his special role because he thought the grass looked greener over there. He thought he could do a better job than Moses. But he was wrong. A few things for us to consider today. Don't let the desire for what someone else has make you resent what you already have. Number 16, verses 4 and 5. When Moses heard this, he fell face down. Then he said to Korah and all his followers, in the morning the Lord will show you who belongs to him and who is holy, and he'll have that person come near him. The, the man he chooses, he will cause to come near. The second thing, don't try to raise your own self-esteem by attacking someone else's. We wouldn't know anyone like that, would we? Can't think of anyone. No one springs to mind, I'm sure. Yes, we won't be pointing fingers. <laughs> our identity comes from being a child of God. Our self-esteem is established in how God sees us. You may not feel you have a great prayer life, but God is drawing and calling you to prayer, drawing and calling you to communicate with Him. Don't overlook what God has already done. Don't overlook what God has given you. Church life is more than just nice feelings as we be a community of faith here in this place. Caring for, helping, reaching out to one another, supporting one another, praying and caring and being a friend. It's not about, oh, well, I feel okay like today. I think I'll wander along to church. It's not about, oh, well, I feel generous. I might give an offering. Amen. It's about our attitude. It's about honoring God. It's about being in His house. It's about serving one another. It's about giving and receiving. It's about caring and loving. There's a struggle. So often we live and enjoy the good and God is saying to us, come over here and discover the best. Korah thought he knew best. But he forgot to consult God who is in control. The third thing, don't use part of God's word to support what you want rather than allowing its entirety to shape your wants. We can make the Bible say a lot of things. We can pull a bit out from here and a bit out from there and put it together and Make it suit our agenda, make it suit our cause. At times we can make the Bible say much more than it actually does say. We need to remember the context, we need to remember who's speaking, what's being said, who came before, who came after, what's the context, what's the culture, what's the chapter, what's the theme, what's the, who's speaking, who's not speaking, what's it all about as we handle God's word with care. In 2 Timothy, we're encouraged in verse in chapter 4. All scripture is God breathed and is used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the people of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
2 Timothy 4, 16 and 17. All scripture. There it is. Look at it. All scripture. So that the people of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let the word of God equip us as we be his people. Fourth thing. Don't expect to find satisfaction with greater power and position. God wants to work through me. God wants to work through you. In the positions that he has given us. And the opportunities that come our way. Let God work through us. Korah missed this very point. He wasn't willing to let God work through him and be happy with the position that God had gave him. No, he wanted to be in charge. He wanted to be the big man. And so in number 16, as we continue to read this story and we see it unfold, verses 28 to 30, Then Moses said, This is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all these things, and that it, that it was not my idea. If these men die a natural death and experience only what usually happens to men, then the Lord has not sent me. But, we love a but in the Bible, don't we? But, if the Lord brings about something totally new, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them and everything that belongs to them, and they go down alive into the grave, then you will know that these men have treated the Lord with contempt. Now that's very harsh, isn't it? <laughs> that's scary. And that's the very thing that happened. Soon as Moses finished talking, the earth opened up and they were gone. Imagine that. Imagine being standing there that day. As Moses finishes speaking those words, the Lord will choose, the Lord will show whether these men are right or wrong, holy or unholy. And the world just opened up and they were gone. Korah, hiding in the Bible, can speak to us from the pages of Scripture today. Understand this today. Korah served God in his house, in his very presence. He ministered before the people and still that wasn't enough for him. The earth opened up and he was gone. It's tragic. It's confronting. It's scary. He wasn't willing to accept Moses' leadership. He wasn't willing to accept the position that God had placed on different people. The calling. The earth opened up and he was gone. I read these funny things that children have learnt on a lighter note for a minute. <laughs> things children have learned. No matter how hard you try, you cannot baptise cats. <laughs> Please don't try these things at home. When your mum is mad at your dad, don't let her brush your hair. <laughs> Ladies. Don't sneeze when someone is cutting your hair. I think that's quite a good one. And this one I really love. The best place when you are sad is on grandma's lap. <laughs> there you go. I'm glad as a church community here this morning that we do not have the mentality of Korah. We have people who are willing to serve. We have people who are willing to lead and care and minister where God has placed them, where God has placed us here in this community. We have people willing to come alongside me and help me and support me in what we're doing here at Living Hope. Friends, I think we're on the right track. Let us enjoy the journey. Let us be like Moses. For God equipped him for the position he was called to do. I love Psalm 34 verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the person 
who takes refuge in him. I want to say thank you. Thank you for coming and standing out in the cold at the Neighbourhood Centre Open Day. Thank you for coming and sorting rotten food and baskets and veggies and bringing them up here and cups of tea and women's ministry and singing and, and all the things we do. Thank you as we honour God in this place. For Jesus beckons us, doesn't he? Jesus beckons us as his followers to a path that at times is not an easy road. It's a path filled with adventure. It's a path filled with uncertainty. There's unlimited possibilities. It's a path that fulfills our deepest longings and deepest desires as we serve him faithfully. Give your heart to the one and only. Give your heart to Jesus. And let us be fully alive. Stop sitting on the sidelines for it's not a spectator sport. Let's unleash the untamed faith within. Be consumed by the presence of a passionate and compassionate God. Go where he sends. Do what he says. Follow his word. And serve him faithfully. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.